Good morning, th third graders. This is Valerie from the Putnam County Library again. Uh, this month, we are going to be talking about R.L. Stein. R.L. Stein is quite well known. Uh, everybody knows him for his famous Goosebumps series. So let's learn a little bit about him. Let's see, R.L. Stein was born in 1943. His, his original name, he was born Robert Lawrence Stein um, and he was born in Columbus, Ohio. He's, he goes by many different names, AKA Bob Stein, R.L. Stein, Robert Stein, um, Jovial Bob Stein. He has all kinds of little names that he likes to go by. So he started writing in 1982 and um, he got international acclaim later that year for the Goosebumps series. His very first um, published book was called, was Blind Date. Um, so he's a top-selling children's book author, and he's known for using his old typewriter that he found, and he likes to make up jokes and humorous stories, which is kind of unusual considering all of his stories about spine-tingling tales of mystery. Stein's father worked as a shipping clerk in a warehouse, and his mother stayed home to look after young Robert and his two siblings. Stein has described himself as a very fearful child and said that his mother gave him one of his first serious frights by reading him Pinocchio. The original Pinocchio is terrifying if you've ever read it. He goes to sleep with his feet on the stove and burns his feet off, Stein said of the classic tale, according to the HarperCollins website. At the Ohio State University, where he attended college, Stein remained focused on the lighter side of life. He edited the school's humorous magazine, The Sundial, for several years. After graduating in the mid-60s, he moved to New York City, and that's where his career began. Stein, Stein launched his first horror book series, The Goosebumps. Well, actually, he started with Fear Street, and then he moved into The Goosebumps series. Fear Street actually has about 100 different uh, novels, and he sold almost 80 million copies of it. Goosebumps soon became a literary phenomenon, and the books became bestsellers in the United States and abroad, and were eventually translated into 16 different languages. Goosebumps was turned into a television series as well, and the tremendously pop popular popularity of the series turned Stein into one of the most successful children's writers of all time, drawing comparisons between Stein and the adult horror writer Stephen King. So, let's talk a little bit about those books. Um, the um, Goosebumps books um, have come to full circle. They're now considered a classic literature, um, especially for mystery writers and spine chillers. So if you would go to purchase them in the store, you can actually buy them as a classic set. So, um, and the Goosebumps, like, it, 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 has so many different um, series starts, if you will, but they don't hinge upon each other to the point that you have to read them all in order. So, um, in fact, the classic ones, the original classics, they don't even um, publish them in order anymore. They're not numbered. You can you can check them out, you know, however it, um, it suits you. So, um, some of them that I have here for you today, this is one of them called The Beast from the East. Every beast for himself. Ginger Wald and her identical, identical twin brothers, Nate and Pat, are lost in the woods. No problem. After all, Ginger did go to that silly nature camp. Still, there's something odd about this part of the world. The grass is yellow, the bushes are purple, and the trees are like skyscrapers. Then Ginger and her brothers meet the beast. They're big, bluey, furry creatures, and they want to play a game. The winners get to live. The losers get eaten. And that's the beast from the east. This one's called Monster Blood. Blood, blood everywhere. While staying with his weird great aunt, Catherine, Evan visits a funky old toy store and buys a dusty can of monster blood. It's fun to play at first, and Evan's dog, Trigger, likes it so much she eats some. But then Evan noticed something weird about the green, slimy stuff. 
It seems to be glowing and growing and growing and growing. And all that growing has given the monster blood a monstrous appetite. And that's monster blood. Okay, so I told you they have some spinoff series, too. Um, one happens to be Horrorland. And here's one of the books from Horrorland. This one happens to be called The Revenge of the Living Dummy. The thrill ride begins. Stare into the wooden face of fear. Brittany Crosby thinks her cousin Ethan is pretty weird, and she happens to be right. Ethan won't stop tormenting Brittany with an old ventriloquist dummy, and the puppet has plans for Brittany, too. Enter the land of a thousand horrors. Next, someone will be offered a vacation at a popular screen park an entire week for free. You have to be a real dummy to refuse that. But some guests aren't allowed to escape Horrorland after just six days and seven frights. Games, prizes, dummies. This book is your ticket to Horrorland. Here's a couple of other fun ones. This one's The Haunted Car. Mitchell Moen keeps, keeps going to his bedroom window to peer down at the car. A street light made the chrome bumper sparkle and the sleek blue body glow. Mitchell couldn't resist. He had to sit in the car. Holding his breath, he crept down the stairs and out the front door. He stepped around to the driver's side and grabbed the handle. Go ahead, a voice whispered. Climb in. Mitchell had no idea how scary this ride was going to be. This one's called The Attack of the Graveyard Ghouls. Dead, but not buried. The fog shimmered up over the dark grass, over the bench, scraggly trees, covering the hill, covering the old graveyard. Spencer Levy heard the horrifying moan. Through the window pane, he heard a long, low wail floating from the wilt. Human and animal at the same time. So cold, so sad, so near. Okay. Also, R.L. Stein actually has started making his, some of his Goosebump books in a graphic novel format. So um, this one is, I happen to have this one. This was The Terror Trips. It's three ghoulish graphic tales. And again, this is in graphic novel format, so it's going to look more like a comic book. So that could appeal to some of you. Three Ghoulish Tales are the ticket to terror in this cool new graphics anthology adapted and illustrated by three hot comic artists. The splashy, spooky fun of Amy Kim Gantner's art is perfect for a story. <coughs> it's about two kids who find themselves in deep trouble while snorkeling. There's something dark, scaly, and very fishy swimming along with them. In a shocker on Shock Street, Jamie Tegelson captures the thrills, chills, and deadly spills of a brother and sister doing their dream dog, testing the rides on a movie studio theme park where the special effects are really special. And one day at Horrorland, there are no crowds, no lines, nobody around to tell a bewildered family the next ride might be the last. Jo Hobson brings her quirky humor and madcap illustrations to this funny story about a family lost in an amusement park. So um, those are some books about from R.L. Stein or, or in collaboration with R.L. Stein in the case of the graphic novel. And um, I've also selected a bunch of other mystery type books that some of you third graders might really enjoy. Um, so until next time, until our November book talk, enjoy. And if you guys have any book requests, if there's something that you would like, have your teacher go ahead and email me and I can uh, go ahead and request those. Again, we are able to get books from all over the state again. And we're very thankful for that. And uh, it just takes a little longer to get them because we have that seven day quarantine. If you have any other questions, feel free to have your teacher email me and have a great day.